My name is Christopher Esplin, and I'm going to do another Firebase walkthrough. This time, we're going to cover data modeling. I'd like to show you some data modeling, show you some good and some bad practices, and just talk a little bit about the concepts that you need to understand to model your data correctly in Firebase. Now, I say correctly, there are many ways to model your data, but there are definitely some wrong ways to model your data. Um, so we're going to try to show you the wrong ways, and as long as you avoid those wrong ways, you should be able to model some efficient data. Okay. First, all that SQL knowledge you have from whatever SQL background you've got, throw it away. It's not very useful. It'll actually hamstring you and make you a much worse data modeler in Firebase. You just don't think like you thought with SQL. This is different. You're thinking about totally different data models. First, the first concept we've got to cover is keeping your data shallow. Firebase wants your data as shallow as possible. You don't want deeply nested data. When I first started, started modeling data with Firebase, I thought, oh, well, I've got my users. So each user has all these different bits and pieces to it. I'm just going to nest them all into the user because Firebase can nest 32 nodes deep. So let's take advantage of that. Let's nest really deep. And every time I want anything from the user, it's just all right there in the object. Um, that was great for all my testing. Um, all my testing worked fine, my app was doing fine, and then I got some users, and I'm gonna show you exactly what happens when you get some users. Okay, so I've got a little little script here. What this script does, it, you know, you've seen this before, it, it hooks up to my Firebase, and it pulls some data from Swappy, the Star Wars API. Okay. So let's run this. And don't worry about the code. The code's not the important part. Uh, not at this moment. Uh, what's really important is the data and how it looks. So we're getting all these users. Okay, birth year, created, blonde, Luke Skywalker, homeworld. Look at all this homeworld. Okay, so we've got his home, whole, whole homeworld nested under here. Okay, so I've got 10 users like this. A whole bunch of these users. Now I cannot loop through these users and pull, all, let's say, pull all their genders or all their hair colors or all their heights or whatever, or all their email addresses. I can't loop through these users without pulling all the children. So Firebase does not allow you to pull just part of an object. When you request an object, you get the whole object. So I can't get the birth, I can't go through and loop through all these users and grab all their birth years without also getting all their home worlds. Now, in this example, the home world isn't a super large chunk of data. But imagine if you had to loop through a million users. Now all of a sudden, this extra data, this is a lot of extra load on your Firebase. You really don't want to be doing that. You want your data as shallow as possible at all times. So yeah, in testing, you're going to be fine. You're going to be rocking and rolling. Um, You're going to be rocking and rolling through this, and your tests will all run fine, and then you'll get some real users, get, say, a few hundred, maybe a thousand users, and your Firebase will grind to a halt. So let's just not do that at all, and let's use this fancy little shared key method. So check this out. I've got here, I've got a user ref, and every time I'm making, I'm making these new users, um, instead of just pushing data directly into the user ref, I'm going to crew, I'm going to uh, pass nothing into the dot push call. So it'll just give me a fresh new ref. We'll check it out. This fresh new ref has got a user ref dot key on it, which is going to be one of these keys. It'll be different every time it runs. Okay. So then I'm going to create a new ref. It'll be called, the, in this case, the home world ref. It'll be user readable slash home world that child, and then I'll add the key. Um, the nice thing is, by using uh, nesting like this user readable, I can just map my security rules directly to my data structure. So, for example, everything under user readable can be readable but not writable. Everything under, say, user own can be readable and writable. Um, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so I'm just going to nest it under user readable for the simplicity of my security rules. I'm going to call it a home world. And then I'm just going to, by, I'm just going to pass in that new user key as the, as the, the next node under homeworld. And that's just a convention that I use uh, to do this shared key method. Okay, then I'm going to go through and get the data as usual. I'm going to 
user.homeworld will be my swappy data. But now, instead of just calling userref.set and setting the whole user, I'm going to set the homeworld ref to user.homeworld. And then I'm going to delete user.homeworld when I set the user. I hope that makes sense. So basically, I'm breaking it out. I've got the homeworld ref that's now going to have the homeworld data. And I've got the user ref that will not have the homeworld data. Let's run this again. All right. And there we go. OK, so we see our users. There's no homeworld, is there? Nope. But look, this guy ends in XCM. User readable, homeworld, the one that ends in XCM. How convenient, Tatooine. And we know that Luke Skywalker originally lived on Tatooine. That's his homeworld. OK. So check out this awesome situation. I now have data. If I know the user's key to get to the user, which I've got to know that key to get to the user, I can always get to his homeworld as well, or her homeworld. You know, we've got all sorts of different genders here in Star Wars. So, yeah, this is a much more efficient way because now I can keep a thin, shallow data structure here under users, and I can add the home world over here under user readable. Let's say I wanted to pull films. Right now it's just a bunch of URLs. I can pull those films and stuff them under films. And notice how, well, I would actually push films under list under this, this uh, user key. So it'd be a key, and then instead of just having the home world directly under it, if it were films because there are multiples, I would have more push keys underneath this push key. It would sort of be this ugly nested push key situation. But it's efficient, and that's what we care about because this scales. This works for a very long time. You're not going to have trouble uh, trouble scaling this out because now I can loop through my users and they're, they're small little users. Okay, so that's an example of shallow data. If your data is not shallow, you could definitely run into the problems. Now, that's not to say it always has to be just one level deep. Yeah, there are times when you want to when you want to nest, but that's something you'll learn over time. You'll learn how to, when to nest, when not to nest. Just be aware, by default, think, hmm, should I be breaking this out? Maybe I don't want to nest it. Uh, if I, am I ever gonna be looping through this? Is this gonna be an efficiency problem? If it's a potential efficiency problem, just break it out. You know, getting it is just one more query. It's not that hard. Um, and with the, the query efficiency that Firebase has, it's so efficient to query data. Making two queries is just really, it's trivial. Okay, so now we've done this. This is a lot of fun. Let's do something crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna comment this out. Ooh. All right. Okay. Now we are gonna make a list of messages. And it's gonna be great. So, var messages ref equals ref dot child messages. Okay, set interval. So every two seconds, we're gonna do messages ref dot push. We're gonna pass in. Um, let's pass in. Pass in date. So pass in these date strings, pass in text, some arbitrary chat text. And yeah, let's just do that. Okay. So run. Start your start your business here. Alright. Oh, there we go. Every two seconds we're gonna get a new message. All right, it's gonna be fun. Let's look in, let's dive directly into this messages node. So you're just gonna watch this guy grow. Okay, so this is to simu simulate a very common situation. When you're dealing with collections in Firebase, you're pushing to these collections sometimes just all the time. Sometimes it's, you know, chatting back and forth or it's, you know, your player, you're creating a game and your player's movements around the board. Every movement you've got to push. So you've got these rapidly growing lists. Um, this could scare you. I mean, especially if you're from a, from a SQL background, maybe these lists are scary. 
Uh, when I first saw him, I'm like, wow, that's a lot of data. Do I really want to be pushing that much data? This feels a little chatty. Well, Firebase is all about these kinds of lists because with Firebase, you've got a single WebSocket connection. You can push data so fast and you can listen to changes extremely quickly. Now, let's first look at how we can make mistakes querying this data because this is where it gets tricky. Pushing to it works every time, super simple. But the querying, this is where it's gonna cause us problems. So let's try messages ref dot on value. Console log out, snap.val. Okay, ready? So if I'm listening to the value, watch down here in my console, watch what happens. The value event gets fired every single time anything changes up here. So every time I add, every two seconds, the value event gets fired and it dumps all the data, okay? This is horrible. This is not how you want to structure your data. Structure, sorry. Your, this is how you structure your data. This is not how you structure your query. You do not want to query on value in this case. It's a disaster. What you want to use is child added. Now child added treats your data as a stream. This is how you want to think about your data. Think of it as streams of data. You want to be listening to the new stuff. You want to be listening to events. You don't want to be pulling down full data structures because these data structures can get so ridiculously large. You just don't want to fuss with that. So now every time I add one, every two seconds, I get one call, a single call for every addition. That's what I want. Now you may have noticed the child added fires once for every existing message. Now again, we're gonna run into the problems as this thing scales, right? We don't want, if, let's say we got a million messages, we don't want a million calls, a million callbacks, and then you know it starts listening. That could take a long time to get those million records. It's kind of insane. So what we do is we go order by key. That is required to do this kind of a query. You first gotta determine how you're gonna order. Now ordering by key is default, but we gotta be explicit about it when we're doing a query like this. So we're gonna say order by key. These keys, these magical keys over here, these push keys, they sort by time, always. Alphanumerically, they sort by time. They're kind of like timestamps, but with a bunch of randomness built in so that you don't have collisions across multiple users pushing at the same time. Okay, first, order by key, then dot limit to last. Ah, we're just gonna limit to the last one. And I'm gonna clear this so you can see it a little cleaner. All right, now watch what this does. It fires once. It fires for the very last one that exists and then it starts firing for the additionals. This is an awesome little trick. It treats your data as a stream and yeah, it fires once for an existing uh, point of data. That's really easy to handle that one. You're not handling millions. And you can scale this up, fire 10 times. If you're doing a page, you want to pre-populate with 10. If you've got a chat app, you want to populate with 10. Um, yeah, populate with 10, and then it'll just watch for the additions after that, and your chat app can then just fill in those, those, uh, those nodes as they come in, okay? So we've covered two things here. First, keep your data shallow. You're, you're gonna regret nesting your data more than you have to. Just really keep your data shallow. Second, uh, streams. Don't use the value event if you don't need to. Value event's great for calling like one object, but don't call value on a collection. Collections are streams of data. Treat them like streams. Streams scale forever. They just scale so nicely. You, you don't get that with the value. You don't get that when you're pulling down full chunks of data. Okay. Oh. Now there's one more thing I gotta cover before we cut this out, before we're done. Uh, data duplication. You need to duplicate your data. So for example, right here, say username Chris, okay? Because, here's the issue. When you break your data out like this, when you have, have data that's shallow, to pull new pieces of data into your shallow data set, you've got to then make additional queries. Now let's say I've got 
a thousand a thousand messages for every message I don't want to be querying in my username that's insanity so what we do with Firebase and this is a general NoSQL concept is you duplicate the data in such a way to benefit your most common use case okay that was a lot of words so if, let's say a chat app in a chat app you're reading a lot more than you're writing. So you're constantly reading, constantly listening to these child added events, and you're constantly reading in the new data. So you want efficient reads, but you don't write as often. So you can, you can cost yourself a little bit more efficiency on the write operation. So here's your trick. You simply do more work on the write and less work on the read, and you duplicate some data. So every time you write and push, that's when you add the username. Username Chris on every single message. So you come all the way down here, all these new messages I'm adding, they've got my username on them. Or they will as soon as I refresh this. There, now they got my username. That's how I want it because that way I can always have the username along with the text because those are the bits of data that are going to go together. So really try to model your data. When you push and write your data out, try to write it exactly like you're going to want to read it. Okay, let's say that again. Write your data to match how it's going to be read. Match your UI. Your data should look like your UI. Now, if you've got multiple different lists, multiple different UIs, just duplicate the data. Have the data in all those different forms so that when you go to read it, it's instantaneous and a piece of cake. I mean, imagine if you were to pull up your Twitter feed and Twitter had to go out and join all the usernames and all the data every time you looked at your Twitter feed. Like, that's insanity. Twitter doesn't work like that. Can you imagine that? Twitter duplicates the usernames and all that stuff along the way. So every time it pulls a record, that record is complete. And that's how you need to be thinking about your data. Okay, so quick recap again. Keep your data shallow. Treat your data like streams. Don't use that value event unless you need to. And try to keep, you know, try to keep your queries thin. Second, <laughs> that was your second. Now your third, duplicate your data. Do not be afraid to duplicate data. It's fine. I know it like drives your old SQL brain crazy. When I first thought, when someone first told me to duplicate, I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't duplicate. Like data should exist in two places at once. What if I have to change it? Well, yeah, changing it stinks. You got to go back and change it in 10,000 places. It's kind of annoying. And so you end up not changing it too often. But that's, a, that's a, a rare operation. It's that read operation you want really efficient. So that's all I got for you. Let me know in the comments if you got any more questions. And I'll be back. Thanks again for listening.